Okay, so for this video, um, this is going to be an expansion of the objective exam, which we covered in uh, a podcast. Uh, for this video, though, we're going to be going through palpation of the foot and ankle. So we'll go through um, looking at the foot, mainly from the dorsal uh, aspect, a little bit from the plantar aspect as well. And we'll work our way from the Taylor curl joint, um, looking at the hind foot, moving into the midfoot of the tarsals, and then finally into the forefoot of the metatarsal and the phalangeal joints. So first, let's identify a few structures here on the foot. Um, when we look at the foot, the first place that we want to start is the lower leg, and then work distally. So as we look at the lower leg here, uh, we can see kind of the anterior portion of the tibia. It's coming down, and the tibia is going to be continuous then with the medial uh, malleolus. And so if we uh, rotate the leg here to the medial side, we can find the medial malleolus. If we rotate more towards the lateral side, we can find the lateral malleolus, and that's gonna be the distal portion of the fibula. In between is where we would find our syndesmosis that we're gonna talk about later when we discuss uh, special tests as well as a high ankle sprain that might impact uh, syndesmotic tissue. Uh, the next part that we're going to do is we're going to actually identify some of the structures of the foot and ankle. And so in order to do that, we need to uh, first uh, grab a handy dandy marker or two um, because we're going to draw some structures here. And so as we do this, you can follow along um, or you can come back and do this at another time. But the first thing you want to do is you want to follow the tibia down until you find the joint space. The joint space is going to be um, the, the, the end of the tibia and the start of the Taylor curl joint. And um, the joint space is in between the Taylor dome and the distal end of the tibia. And in a slightly plantar flex position, which is where the foot and ankle is right now, this would be the open pack position. And so this is a good position to uh, perform your palpation in. And so we're going to trace here. I don't know how well this is going to show up, but um, we're going to trace around kind of the distal end here, both medial and lateral to kind of identify our landmarks. And then this would be kind of the distal portion here of the tibia, all right? From there, we can start to identify the Taylor dome. And I'm gonna do that in different color just so that there's a little bit of contrast. So. The Taylor Dome is here. Um, there's a little bit of a joint space. And then the Taylor Dome is gonna come down like such. All right, make sure you use a washable marker or something like that that you know is gonna come off later. All right, so there's our Taylor Dome that's kind of illustrated there in the green. From there, we want to work down into the tarsal joints. And so from there, um, really the easiest way to find the tarsals, on the more medial side, we have the navicular. On the more lateral side, we have the cuboid, and then our three cuneiforms. And really an, an easy way to kind of identify those is to find the end of the uh, talus. So you find the Taylor dome, you work your way down. Uh, there's going to be, um, a protuberance on the medial side, and that is uh, kind of the head, if you will, of the navicular. And so you can kind of mark that with your with your uh, marker uh, where that where that division would be. And so that is going to be our navicular right there, and that would be um, kind of articulating, if you will, with our talus. So we're just going to kind of color all that in. All that would be talus there. And then down through here, we're going to find our navicular, okay? And um, specifically where we're palpating here on the medial side is uh, kind of right above the medial longitudinal arch at kind of the, the high point, if you will. And keep in mind, navicular drop is oftentimes utilized as a measure of, of the degree of pronation that occurs at the foot and ankle. And so really the, the head of our navicular is right there. And so that's all continuous with the navicular bone, okay? Um, from there then, we come and we look at the cuneiforms. Now the cuneiforms um, are gonna be just distal to the navicular, and the cuneiforms, uh, we have the medial cuneiform, the intermediate, 
and then the lateral cuneiform, and they articulate with the first, second, and third MTP. And so the easiest way to kind of find these is to identify uh, the, the metatarsal uh, phalangeal joint, the MTP, then trace back more proximally um, to the uh, more proximal uh, portion of the uh, metatarsal bone. And then right here, I'm gonna color this in again with a contrasting color, would be our first cuneiform. We come over to our second metatarsal and trace back. There's going to be our second cuneiform or intermediate cuneiform. And then we come back and we find our third cuneiform in line with our third, second, and first metatarsals. All right. From there then, we have to consider kind of what's taking up the big portion over here on the lateral side of the foot. And keep in mind that the calcaneus actually is gonna come forward a, a good ways. Uh, and so kind of the border of the calcaneus um, would be really all the way here. And so we then find our cuboid in this space right over here where I'm kind of coloring in with orange right now. Hopefully you have a color that's a little better to show up on skin than I do, um, but I wanted to make this still washable. So um, all that would be kind of the cuboid. Now, part of the reason you know that's the cuboid is there's a fairly prominent bony landmark right here. And if you trace kind of along the lateral border of the fifth metatarsal, you're gonna encounter the fifth met head and that fifth met head kind of dives in there's a little bit of a divot there right as you drop off that and right as you drop off that right behind that is the cuboid and then if we work back the cuboid actually articulates then uh, with both the fourth and the fifth metatarsal and then that would be the link um, of the midfoot between the hind foot and the more uh, distal forefoot Okay, so <clears throat> we're gonna leave kind of our, our coloring on the foot and ankle now, and then we're gonna go through a bit of palpation now that we've kind of identified uh, our landmarks, uh, so to speak. So, so to begin with, we're gonna start with the Taylor curl joint. Uh, the Taylor curl joint is, is the other term for the ankle. Um, we have both medial palpation and lateral palpation. If we look at the medial side, we're gonna start anteriorly, kind of right here between the extensor tendons. So um, if we resist uh, the individual coming into dorsiflexion, so go ahead and pull your foot back, right? Uh, a little bit harder, keep going, keep going, there we go. We can see some of those tendons begin to pop out kind of here on the anterior portion. We can even palpate some of those tendons. And that tells us that we're on that anterior portion, specifically of extensor hallucis longus and um, extensor uh, digitorum superficialis. Um, from there, we would follow that kind of around medially to the anterior border of the medial malleolus. So we might rotate the leg just a little bit so we can see this. Here's the medial malleolus. We can uh, palpate that right across our joint line here and trace the border then to the lateral malleolus. And that gets us into our lateral palpation. So we come to the lateral side. Um, here we find um, not only uh, the, the lateral portion of our talus, uh, but then also the distal portion of our fibula. From there, we can also palpate the talus and the calcaneus. The talus um, we can find by plantar flexing the foot and finding the neck, and that's kind of identified here in green. And we can feel for the motion of the body of the talus. Um, part of how we can do that is by taking the foot into inversion and eversion. This will be more apparent as we get into kind of more of the tests and measures uh, and we have the individual in a prone position. We can also palpate the calcaneus. The calcaneus, if we lift the foot up, that's gonna be the hind foot back here. And so we can palpate around the, 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 the borders and the edges, um, come from underneath, and we can even come underneath that lateral side of the foot and ankle. Keep in mind, when we talk about the lateral ankle, this is where we kind of have those three ligaments that get involved with our West Point grading scale. So we have the anterior talofibular ligament, we have the uh, uh, posterior talofibular ligament, and then we have the calcaneal fibular ligament, which is the CFL. And that would extend from the uh, uh, head of the fibula down to the calcaneus, right? So ATFL, CFL, 
PTFL, and those are the three tendons that, or excuse me, ligaments that are implicated with uh, lateral inversion ankle sprain. From there, we can look at the subtalar joint. Uh, the subtalar joint is better identified in a prone position, but just for ease of, of palpation, uh, we, can, we can utilize uh, kind of this, this position. Um, if we trace kind of along the medial portion of our malleolus, we'll find um, uh, just inferior is where we find kind of the lateral subtalar joint. Um, the medial joint is located off the tip of the medial malleolus, and um, you'll be able to kind of uh, feel a little bit of a joint gap there um, uh, between um, several of the bones of that medial side. So you have your, your talus uh, articulating with the calcaneus, and then more anterior where we kind of see this orange on the foot, this would be our navicular. So you can also come more into kind of the anterior portion of the midfoot and palpate that joint space as well. Then we get into our mid-tarsal joints. Here we find our talonavicular joint. That's the joint I was just referencing that um, you can palpate. You have to find the navicular tuberosity. Um, that's uh, kind of the most bony prominent point right here. Um, we'll rotate back so you can see just a little bit. Um, right here, at kind of the, the high point or the apex of the arch. Um, you can also trace the navicular dorsally. Um, kind of moving in a medial to lateral direction. And that's right where we kind of see this orange coloration on the foot. And then you can also move proximally while taking the foot into supination and pronation to identify then the head of the talus and that joint line. So if you want, you can keep your hand on that navicular tuberosity and then take the foot through pronation and supination and feel kind of how those joints begin to articulate one onto the next. From there, we can also look at the calcaneocuboid. Now we need to rotate the foot such that we have access to the lateral side. Um, again, how this is identified is we want to trace the border of our fifth metatarsal. Um, you can see that indentation right there. Um, hopefully that, that kind of shows up on the camera. And then we see our cuboid illustrated here in kind of the orange coloration on the foot. Uh, once you identify kind of the dorsal surface, you can use a pincer grasp to also identify the, the uh, more plantar surface. So remember that pincer grasp is, is um, uh, kind of like grasping a key. And so you can really kind of come in here and get a hold of the cuboid. And then from there, we look at the intertarsal joint. The intertarsal joint is the um, articulation between the cuboid and the navicular, as well as the cuneiforms and the cuboid. Um, with this, really all of these are held together with varying uh, intertarsal ligaments. And so while you may be able to palpate some of the joint spaces, um, it's gonna be somewhat dependent upon the posture of the foot, as well as the tissue mass of the foot. Um, but you can begin to trace from the navicular down to the individual cuneiforms, uh, medial, intermediate, and uh, lateral. Uh, you can also find then the cuboid as it articulates with the cuneiform, so you identify then the cuneocuboid joint. Um, and then from there, you can work distally into the intertarsal uh, uh, area, and then finally the metatarsals. With all of these, a pincer grasp can be uh, utilized to palpate both the dorsal and the plantar surface at the same time, you would merely uh, try to stabilize the bones that you would not be assessing. So for example, um, if I was working on the navicular or the uh, medial cuneiform, first cuneiform, I would stabilize all of the bones on this lateral side, and then I would come from this more uh, medial side, use that pincer grasp, and I could work on either mobilizing or palpating that bone. We also then find our cuneonavicular, the intercuneiform joints, which we've already talked about. Uh, again, you can identify um, the first, second, and third, otherwise known as uh, medial, uh, intermediate, and lateral cuneiforms um, within that area as well. And then finally, we get into the tarsal, metatarsal, and intermetatarsal joints. Um, once you've identified the cuneiforms, you can work just distally, or you can come down to the MTP joint and work more proximally and identify each metatarsal unto themselves 
and go from there. Just remember the cuboid is going to articulate with both the fourth and fifth, while the three cuneiforms articulate with first, second, and third. Again, just like we saw with our uh, uh, kind of tarsal uh, uh, joints and bones, uh, if we want to stabilize, we're going to kind of wrap our, our hand and uh, use kind of this uh, C lumbrical grip to stabilize whichever uh, tissues we're not working on. So if I wanted to target uh, the mobility of the first metatarsal, I could stabilize second through fifth with one hand and then focus over here. Uh, additionally, that would enable me to uh, identify the intermetatarsal joints that travel medially and laterally across the bases of the metatarsals. And so um, from there then, we work into the MTP joint, which is the metatarsal phalangeal joint. The metatarsal The metatarsal phalangeal joint is where we see the articulation between the, the distal end of the metatarsal and then the interphalangeal, uh, either proximal or um, uh, then uh, further distally into the distal interphalangeal. Um, these are, are really best going to be identified by tracing the shaft of the metatarsal and then finding the plantar aspect of each MTP head. On the dorsal surface, you can kind of identify the knuckle lines as well, uh, and that gives you kind of a, a demarcation for the general region of not only the MTP joint, but then proximal interphalange and distal interphalange, so PIP and DIP. And then finally, we have our interphalangeal joints, which are again, continuing to move more distally. Um, we can use dorsiflexion and plantar flexion to kind of confirm by going up and down with each individual digit. Uh, we can stabilize more proximally, work further out. And once we get into kind of the test and measure portion, uh, what we can do is we can stabilize at either the D, uh, excuse me, the MTP or the PIP while grasping distal to the DIP, distal interphalange, and we can distract, we can rotate, as well as glide those joints individually with each one of the digits. So uh, hopefully that provides you with a bit of overview, not only of kind of the anatomical landmarks and uh, palpation, but also refreshes how you're gonna identify each individual joint as well as uh, the contributions of each one of those joints in terms of bony landmarks. So uh, enjoy your own palpation, use markers, make sure they're washable, and let me know if there's any questions.